That's into right field. Long run for Pilar. And Pilar all out into foul territory to make the play. Bogarts with a drive out to right field. Judge is back on it, and that one's gone. Against all odds. There's a high fly ball driven deep to right. Verdugo back to the pen. Leaps up. He caught it. He caught the ball. He took it back. And I will keep on waiting for a better day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the pesky poll podcast episode 72 you already know who we're naming this episode after right brian yep xander bogarts am i right <laughs> suck it no uh obviously this is the garrett whitlock episode Thank you already you. know he got he got the, he got the message no this I'll... is the garrett whitlock episode that's my boy you already know what time it is how you guys doing today joining me for the third or fourth time i've lost count this dude it's it's the trio of podcasts with the pesky pole um the fumble ruski and down to the wire this one is the host of down to the wire another podcast host running it by himself brian introduce yourself to the people well obviously uh, robert thank you thank you once again for having me on the show uh for anyone who doesn't uh for anyone who hasn't uh, seen me on either of robert's past shows or seen my show uh as well um my name is brian costa i run the down to the wire podcast at uh bright university in smithfield rhode island I'm Chris. going to be a I'm going to be a junior this fall, which is actually wild in my mind. Uh, and you know, I've I talk about all things sports. I interview athletes, and I've had Robert on uh, one time. I'm hoping hoping maybe I can make that another time. Uh, you know, possibly even tomorrow, relatively soon, sometime this summer. Uh, and we got some, and we kind of just cover all things sports. Uh, but you know, obviously, very excited to be talking Red Sox tonight. As you know, it's it th- this. This team, uh, since the last time we talked, has you know taken quite the uh, has, has taken quite the wild turn that I was not expecting this year. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, we will get into all of that, and plus, you guys will hear me on his show at the same time you are hearing this. His show on, I'm assuming Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, where else? Uh, so unfortunately, iTunes again cannot cannot. Oh, I forgot about you. that. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm, it, it's cheap. It's sorry, uh, but you know, I, but uh, I am on Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, YouTube, uh, but the main hub that you can access all, all that, all that stuff through is our Instagram. Uh, d- at and you can find it at down dot to the wire again at down dot to the wire on Instagram. Uh, but you know, uh, we'll, we'll be ho- we'll be putting out an episode tomorrow talking about uh, you know things like the Albert Pujols signing, uh, as well as uh, you know some other as well as some other things going on there. Mm -hmm. absolutely so if you guys want to hear some red sox stuff but more just sports in general and mlb in general i will have a link in the description whether you're on spotify or youtube for me i will have a link to his spotify so you can go listen to me on his episode releasing the same time as you are seeing this without further ado make sure for the youtube people you hit that subscribe and notification you can see every time i go live twice a week even though i've been lazy with uploads i apologize it's been a rough like three or four weeks for me graduating college moving back home trying to get a setup done and everything losing my mic in travels it was bad got a new one we're all good now uh spotify and itunes gang i never ever forget about you guys how you guys doing today make sure you hit that follow button so you can see every time i go live and before we start, huge shout out though to the people, Spotify, iTunes. Uh, my RSS just dropped this thing where you can see everybody who is frequently listening to your episode. So shout out the one person in Wyoming, Kansas, uh, Florida, LA, which I know is JD, but there are a couple others in LA. Uh, we got one in London, one in Belgium, a couple in India. <laughs> And one in Australia, which is crazy to think about. So thank you worldwide for the people listening. That is insane. Red Sox Nation is wild, man. I mean, you can't even you can't get enough of them. I mean, I mean, I got to say Belgium. I I mean, if, if not for COVID, I would I would probably just have to say that some fan from the States just watching this on vacation. But, mm-hmm. you know, I mean you know congrats to the one Belgium uh, to the one Belgian fan that's watching this thing. Uh, you know, y- you made it, man. <laughs> Your fans. Hey, 
Cheers to you for finding a random kid in the middle of Massachusetts and now Tennessee who's talking about Red Sox baseball and you're an active listener, it says. So I truly, truly do appreciate you. Without further ado, you got anything else to say to the people before we get started? Uh, I don't really think so. I mean, obviously, uh, you just hope that that one person isn't like some uh, isn't a bot and you get in here. It's an actual real person. Uh, but, you know, I, I again, I, I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to possibly be able to grow my show as well. So, again, uh, make sure you go over make sure you go over those Instagrams. Uh, obviously, thankful again to have Robert on, to, you know, be on the show with Robert. Uh, so I'm kind of ready to get right into it. All right. So first bit of news I got to talk about the Red Sox currently right now are the third best team in the AL. And by the way, by the way, just in case anyone's wondering, uh, Yankees are the fourth best team in the AL East. Just just in case you forgot about that. The AL East, though, very, very tight. It's oh, yeah. Red Sox, who are, like I said, top two in the AL right now. Blue Jays, who are a game and a half. Very important series here, by the way. The Rays, who are two games behind. Yankees, who are two and a half games behind. Orioles... They're gone. No, <laughs> no, but all around, we are still the second best team in the um, MLB. Shocking. Because everyone told us, yep, they're going to start out hot, but we are going to die down. I mean, we're a quarter of the way through the season at this point. We're 42 it's a games long in. Long season. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're a quarter of the way in. We're on game number 43, but we've shown very, very little signs of slowing down. Yeah, no, I mean, we've looked at we've looked uh, especially strong so far. I, you know, have to be still cautiously optimistic. I mean, you know, I, I've had you know, obviously obviously with the Red Sox, you've had teams in the past that have come out and, you know, have been really strong. But then, you know, fall apart. You think of 2011. I don't think this is a 2011 team. I think the culture uh, with the, I think the culture with this group is too strong for that to kind of happen. But, uh, you know, they're still kind of young and that can that sometimes can uh, lead to problems that the inexperience can sometimes get to guys. But so far, so far, they seem to be shining. So, so far, they seem to be shining. My apologies there. No, I, I can't wait to see what happens with this team. I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is the 03 Red Sox. Mm. It's it's crazy to say, but J.D. is our big poppy of 03 Chris okay. sale. Once he gets back to hopefully 80, 90% strength is going to be our Pedro Martinez. We are a Kurt Schilling away from a world series. Okay. We need I'd... to go out there and we need to make the trade in the off season to be able to get, to be able to get that point. You know, Robert, it's actually interesting that you get that you, that you're now at this point. Cause I remember you were saying to me that, you know, coming into this year, you thought it was going to be maybe 2023, 2024 before we, before we're at this point. So uh, what, you know, obviously it, what, what have uh, this, you know, hot start has made you kind of think that, you know, we're now just a Kurt Schilling kind of piece of wet. We're I've, I've really been saying that since like the start of the year, I, Mm -hmm. it was, I always said that our world series was going to be 2023, 2024. And I'm going to stick by that. I'm going to say still 2023, just because I think, this year is a playoff team, probably a second round exit. Next year, we get that piece from maybe a World Series contender. And then I say 2023, we're going to be right in the World Series. That's at least the slope I see us going at. But as of right now, keep the pieces together, trade in some of the rotational guys, and this team's all set. Yeah, I, mean, no, I mean, oh, yeah, go ahead. Because just think about how our team is. Like I said, JD Martinez is our new big poppy. Xander Bogarts, Raphael Devers, Noma, and who's our third baseman? It wasn't Mike Lowell at the time. It wasn't Orla- or- Orlando Cabrera was 2003. Oh, uh, two- oh, four, oh, four, oh, four, rather. My apologies. Uh, All right. Here. So, no, uh, Matt Barnes is our uh, – why am I forgetting everybody? I'm looking up the 03 team. Kim? Was it Byung Han Kim? Yeah, he was our closer. Damn. I, I, I love that name. Beyond Hung Kim. Alex Verdugo, our Johnny Damon. <laughs> all right. And that one's probably the most accurate out of all of them. And you can't well, I, even say anything. I'd have to agree with you. I just hope that uh that the prophecy of 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 an, of the next Johnny Damon doesn't end up with him going to the New York Yankees. Oh, I will fight somebody. <laughs> like I said, Vasquez is our Veritech. Okay. Um yeah, that team had Kevin Millar on it. 
like I said, um, Xander's our Noma. Where realistically, a Manny, and uh, that's about it. We're we're a Manny and a shilling away. Yeah, and that's just uh, you know, I mean, unfortunately to put it lightly, though, you know, Manny's and Kurt Schilling so come, you know, you can't just pick those, those guys off the. Those yeah. don't come off, and yeah, you no. really need to go out and buy. And in this team right now, I I don't see anybody that's close to Manny. I don't see even a Trot Nixon in our outfield right now. Yeah, I I I, I see that low key. So we gotta yeah. we gotta be able to just turn it around. Um, not that was a bad choice of words. We got to just be able to find those little pieces that are able to get us to that next level. Actually, yeah. speaking of, speaking of Trot Nixon, I got to find something. Uh Oh, cause let me look. Um, there we go. <laughs> how are we in batting? It won't show me how good we were in batting that year, but this team from the batting average, uh, this team's batting average was a 289 mm-hmm. for the gear. Ours is what two sixty something, but we're still top of the league. Yeah, it's two sixty something, and it's two sixty four. Yeah, third in the and, league. Yeah, and I was seeing something this year. I think the league wide batting average, I I forget what it was, but I think I think currently the league is on pace to have the lowest batting average, in like in kind of like I I think in like modern history, it's gonna it's gonna be down like in that range. It's pretty abysmal. Yeah, our, the. The league batting average right now is about a 235, somewhere yeah, around there. Terrible. That is atrocious. And RIP to all you Seattle Mariners fans out there with your team batting a whopping 203. Moment of silence. I mean, not to even mention that they got no hit by John Means. Again, I'll give hey, hey, hey. silence. All I got to say is the week before that happened, I was on my podcast and I, I was talking about maybe some potential trades we can do. And I said, you know what? I wouldn't mind putting a John Means in my rotation. And then John Means goes out and pull a real winner. Yeah, that kind of took him off the market. <laughs> that was beautiful. John Means deserves it. Oh, it was great. I've I've been uh I've been really happy. I I I was seeing a lot of no hitters going down early this year, and I was like I was like man ah like I, I gotta read it. I gotta download uh the MLB at, at bat app again because I remember it always gives the uh, no no alerts. Yep. And I I was like I was like why am I missing out on this? And obviously my phone because I just hadn't accessed the app in so long just kind of uh undownloaded the app to save storage space. So I go in, and so far this year I've I've had the luxury of, of watching the John Means no hitter and the Wade Miley no hitter. So. Uh, you know, you know, two for two so far since I've since I've redownloaded the app, I've thoroughly been enjoying that. Yep. Update. We're down six nothing to the Blue Jays. That's a bad. That's going to be bad. That's Lovely. that's going to push them to a half game within the division. That's great. That's that's not good at all. Um, but other than that, our dudes have still been raking. Tonight's obviously not a great night, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, Xander JD are still batting above three hundred each. Doogie's two eighty. Uh, Devers is 280. Vasky's almost 260. KK uh, is 240. And then the rest of the guys just aren't there. I mean, I like having Chavis back in this lineup. I don't know if he got dropped down, actually. I didn't see anything about it, but yeah, I don't I mean, know. I mean, he's back, from, he's back up from Worcester, which is great for us. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just tough to see right now. I mean, you know, you've had struggles in the lineup, but, you know, so far it's been – pretty strong so you know gotta just you gotta embrace the positives right now and just kind of hope that uh you can ride this out Mm -hmm. and like i said and no one would have guessed this before the season our saving grace has been our pitching yeah no i would have i would have had no hope no hope in that uh pavet jake pavetta you know so far has been why did i say jake i'm I'm... i think you're trying to say jake arietta jake arietta i that's a name I'm such a loser. My God. Uh, no, Nick Pavetta. My apologies. You know, I can't even say the guy's name right. That's why I, that's why I didn't think he, I, that he was going to be such an impact player this year for the Red Sox. Uh, I thought that he was just going to be the guy, just some guy we get in the Brandon Workman deal. And so far, he's actually been pretty, pretty solid for us this year. He's been great. And the best part is he wasn't even the best part about that deal. Connor Siebold still running up the ranks, and he's the big part of that deal. Yeah, which is great for us. So, and, and you know, I, I've given I've given Heimblum a lot of grief, 
But to be able to get, uh, but you know, obviously to pull off that deal and get a guy like Pavetta, who's been really solid for us, and then bring back, uh, and and then to be able to bring back Workman from that deal, obviously he struggled mightily since he since he was traded. He's now in Worcester trying to trying to find, you know, what he was, and maybe. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, we got we got Workman back, so let's you know, go. That that's a W of a deal for me. I mean, I mean, you trade a guy and you immediately get him back like the next year in free agency. It's a that's Chapman great. all over again. Yeah, that's a Chapman, and I mean, I mean. Maybe not, maybe not an apples for apples comparison there, but we'll take it. I mean, if 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 we could get Brandon Workman back to the kind of guy that he was like in 2019, where he was absolutely dealing out there, and you know had and you know maybe the velocity doesn't ever come back, but it's a great setup, man. Absolutely. So that that's something that I feel like you definitely have to look at, especially you know kind of you know seeing you know there have been some issues. You know, obviously Matt Barnes this year has been really great as our closer, insane. But I, it's it's actually insane how how great he's been, but you know obviously I think the the questions you know going into the seventh eighth inning it's kind of been it's kind of been you know kind of a jumbled bag so far it's been like hey do we try Sawamara do we try Sawamura out here do we try uh, do we try any of these guys do we try, is Ottavino going to be the fit and you know there have been some plug and place things but you know it there hasn't been seemed to be a solid answer so either we're going to have to go out at the trade deadline and try to make some moves and say and say, Hey, we're going to just get the eighth inning guy. And we're just going to make that. We're just going to make the statement. And he, and we're going to get our guy, or maybe you work Brandon Workman back into it. You know, a lot of people kind of figured that maybe when he got traded, that a lot of that had a lot of that, you know, might've been uh, him leaving a system that he's been accustomed to for so many years. He's going to, he went to Philly and then immediately went to Chicago. So you're kind of, you know, for him where he's been in the system for so long, you know, getting thrown into this new environment, it, you know, maybe the human element of it just kind of impacted him and, you know, getting back in Boston, getting back with the trainers and some of the guys that you knew best, maybe we could, maybe we could eventually see the Brandon Workman that we knew. Hopefully. Cause I, I love that Brandon Workman. And right now oh, yeah. I know that I could take Josh Taylor and say, screw you, you're back in Worcester and then bump him you're up. Only, so you're only sending him to Worcester. I would have put him out on the street tomorrow. <laughs> maybe, maybe send him down to Greensville. Actually, I got some buddies down in Greensville. They can't, they can't afford to be taking L's like that because of yeah, Josh Taylor. It's awful. Which, which that's that's kind of cool to say that I I could say I got some buddies down in Greensville that, and those dudes are actually killing it. Like I talk, I talk with um with Brendan Salucci a lot, and he yeah. he'll just tell me how stuff's going down there and how the team's doing, all that fun stuff. And my guy, um, Cole Brandon, I, I tried to tell him that if he just changed his walk-up song, he'd bat better this year. I think he's still batting below a 100 average. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I'm let me let me fact check just to make sure, but I think I think it's that bad. But they don't deserve Josh Taylor. We don't or, deserve we don't deserve uh, Taylor. Austin Bryce is a nightmare. I mean, hell no. There's so many guys that, you know, frankly, if we could just strap them to a rock and just send them in the send them into the uh, upper atmosphere, I'd or Chicago, do so. yeah, which is essentially where you send uh, all oh the, my all god, the, all the burnt out pitchers. Burn. What's it now? Oh, 53. Jesus, Jesus Christ! I ruined this man's career. The independent <laughs> league is calling. He um he's had 19 at bats and one hit. Which was a home run. <laughs> His only hit was a home run on Mother's Day. Jeez. Has he, Damn. Can he at least pitch a little fast? No. <laughs> he's, he's a center fielder. He's got I mean, good speed. He's I got mean, really center, good speed. But I he mean, can't center, have the speed if he can't get on base. I mean, center fielders, uh, you know, they, they can uh, they, they can throw pretty hard. Uh, he his, his arm isn't anything great, but he's a good fielder. With yeah. good, with great speed. Okay, that's just who it was. Um, he strikes out a lot, though. Yeah, he's had nineteen plate appearances or at bats and twelve strikeouts this year. I don't want to. I don't want to keep ripping on my guy Cole. That's my dude. No, no, no. You, you know, obviously, I had struggles when I when I played, and obviously, it sucks when you're in it. So, you know, hopefully, you can bust out of it, and you can, you know, have a have a nice, uh, you know, strong, you know, strong rest of his season. Mm -hmm. But like I said, this pitching rotation is still something nice. Everybody on this team is under a five ERA besides Taylor. Even Andre East, screw that guy, 
has a four nine one. I told you the story about Matt Andre East, right? Yeah, yeah, you told me about him. How he's yeah. just like an a hole. Screw that. He wasn't an a hole. He just left me on bread, and I'm mad <laughs> about it. But we don't want to talk about that. Garrett Richards is even averaging under a four ERA. Adovino's bumped it back. He's at three eight six. Garrett Whitlock is still our best pitcher with a one seven seven on a innings restriction, but still has as many innings as Matt Barnes, who has a two six six ERA. I feel like I feel like you can't I feel like you can't get enough of that. <laughs> what that? that the, the fact that the fact that you got to Whitlock before I feel like anyone else did. Oh, yeah, that was that was my big thing. And I uh, him and I already talked. He's coming back on at the end of the season. And really, that's sick. <laughs> I mean, I already told him, like, I don't want to bother you during your during your time because yeah. it's just constant travel, play, oh, travel, yeah. play, travel, play. Once the season's over in our November, December, I'm really hoping to get him. We've already talked about getting him back on, but just getting that all finalized and being able to have him back on and shoot the you know what with him and oh, all yeah, that would no, be awesome. I, I was also about to say you, you you started hinting at October. I was I was like it better not be an over in October. We're 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 running this thing. No middle middle <laughs> late November. Let let him celebrate with the team. Get oh, yeah. that World Series. Oh yeah, no, uh, you know, go on the world tour when everything open up when everything's open back up in the fall. Maybe uh you know. Go around the country. So we'll hoist, say hoisting the hoisting the hunk of metal that uh, Rob Manfred likes to call it, <laughs> and and have a great and have a great time. So when it's his time to come back on, it'll be a great time. We'll say January. All right. Okay. Yeah. January. Let me let me look at this team's pitching though. I think as an ERA, we are like eleventh right now. Oh, twelfth. Twelfth in ERA. And what are we with? Whip. His whip is also a big one. Uh, in whip, we are 17, so average. But I'll still take that from this team. Yeah. I mean, this so team wasn't supposed to be anything special when it came to um, pitching. We were supposed to be one of the worst in the league, but now you're saying we're slightly above average? I know. It's insane. I mean, another stat that I heard that kind of – I was – I mean – I, I might be uh, like, you know, this might not be completely accurate in the way I was saying and the way I'm hearing it, but I guess the Red Sox this year, I, I believe it's their bullpen or, or at least, uh, you know, one aspect of their relief pitching. They've allowed the least home runs uh, through, through this amount of time or like games uh, this year, whereas mm -hmm. last year they allowed the most. Yep. So that uh, if you, I mean, you know, you know, they were, they were saying, if you want, if you want to see like the biggest improvement from this team, it's that. Yeah. And here's the thing also, we still need to work heavily on our fielding. We're oh, twenty third yeah. in fielding. Yeah, it's not great. I don't like that one. It's not great. I mean, Devers has you know his defense hasn't been as bad these past these past couple of weeks. Obviously, you know when it's Devers, you got to be uh, you, you kind of always have to be uh, you know, kind of uh, on edge with it. But it's been mm -hmm. better than what it's been better than what we thought it was going to be. Obviously, uh, obviously you have guys like Dahlbeck over at first base where you're going to have to try to figure out uh you know, is, is that going to be, uh, you know, his full-time position? Maybe do you get him over third? Cause I guess he's actually a pretty solid third baseman. Uh, so I'm, there are some questions as to what you do there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a question, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, and I mean, it's, it's just a matter of these guys getting better. Mm -hmm. It's just, we've, we've added some sort some guys to be able to help with that throughout this offseason. Marwin Gonzalez has been insane defensively. Not putting up great numbers at the plate, but insane defensively. Hunter Renfro has been holding his own. Bobby Dahlbeck has gotten so much better. He's been able to scoop a lot of balls out of first base, saving Devers a bunch of errors. That is that is true. So, you know, the guys who are lower in our batting order, I must piss about this, that we got three, four guys in our order that are struggling. And I'm like, no, because these guys are up with us defensively. And considering we're still one of the top two, top three batting teams in the league, we can get away with that. Yeah, you can't you can't afford those uh you can't afford that when it I mean obviously when your other main guys are contributing like Bogarts and all those other guys when they're contributing in the way that they can you can't afford you know usually it's about two guys but when you get into three and you're rolling and you're really rolling like that you can uh you, you can make some compensations mm -hmm. exactly it's it's weird you know trying yeah. to balance it because Adam was saying. He was just like, he doesn't understand the st stability of it. He thinks that that's going to crack. One of our top five in uh, batting average between Vasquez, JD, Verdugo, Devers, and Bogarts. If one of those cracks for a month and goes on a cold slide, we're dead. 
yeah. which Wh- he's not entirely wrong, but I mean, I don't necessarily hundred percent agree with that. I mean, it's, it's gonna, it is tough though. I mean, you know, cause cold spells like that, you know, unfortunately can be contagious as, as well as, as well as, hot, you know, hot streaks can too. So, I mean, I think the thing that you kind of have to be careful of is that if, uh, is that, you know, if they do go on kind of a roll like that, you know, you know, is there going to be someone who can step it up? You know, mm-hmm. what is going to be, you know, what, what can this team do when there is adversity? Cause you know, frankly, you know, you know, the hottest hitters on the planet, you know, you know, you can, Bogarts could go out and hit 400 this year, but he still, but he still could have a bad month. Yeah. So it's exactly. like, so it's like, you know, you know, with, through all, through all the great times, you know, you know, being, being a great player in baseball is struggling seven out of 10 times. You know, when, when guys, when guys are having rough patches, like, you know, are having rough patches that are maybe worse than that. And, you know, they're, you know, really trying to make things work. Mike Trout, who I was seeing recently, uh, you know, he's hitting below, you know, through his last couple, uh, I believe 15 games or so he's hitting below 200, you know, you know, even, even the greatest guys, you know, have streaks like this. So you do have to wonder, you know, when, when these things kind of do arise, you know, are, are you equipped to handle that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Let's get into our next thing that if you're a Red Sox fan and you saw 2018 or 20 was 2018 or 2017, I can't remember, but if you saw this play from Machado, made you feel some sort of way. So basically for the people who haven't seen it, there's a runner on first. The Padres are against the Cardinals. There are no outs, looks like. And uh, Machado's on first. There's a ground ball hit to second base. And Machado, instead of just running through, trying to avoid the tag, slides and takes the legs right out from under. I think it's Colton Wong. Who is No, uh, Col- Colton Wong's on the Brewers now. Shut up. Uh, Tommy Edmond. Tommy Edmund. All right. Shut up. But uh, then Colton, uh, Machado just slides straight into his legs. I can't put a clip for the YouTube video because they'll copyright yeah. strike me because screw the MLB. But he goes right for the leg. Yeah. It, but some people would try and say, well, he's trying to get out of the way and let him turn a double. But he's 40 feet away from the back. Yeah. I mean, listen. You know, I, I will say the the new slide to avoid rules uh, throughout baseball are ridiculous. I think that, you know, the, I think that, you know, the way they were implemented after the Chase Utley play, you know, say what you want about it. I think that the way that they are implemented, though, is, you know, kind of ridiculous. You know, we've seen too many times where it's, you know, really impacted games. I mean, you know, not even at the MLB level, but I know just, you know, in personal games that I played in, like not even varsity games, but like town baseball games I would play in and like the slide, the slide to avoid play would come into effect. And it would be like a really crucial situation and it could be a bang, bang play and you don't even know about it. But you know, when it comes to Manny Machado, man, I just have an, I have an animus. I have, I have a bias against the guy. I hate him as a baseball player because he because he ruined the uh because he ruined the career of, of my favorite baseball player dustin pedroia because when he slid into him uh you know back in i believe it was either 16 or 17 like you like you were saying you know messed up his knee never recovered from it and you know just and just this past winter retired from baseball because he said his knee is so messed up yeah. and you know obviously the obviously the machado play you know influenced that and it angers me so much because you know, just seeing just seeing the fact that you know he still kind of does the stuff. I mean, you know, like I think even later that year or, or like the next or like the very next year, he had a play where he uh, kind of like spiked Jesus Aguilar when he was running through first base. Uh, I think it was in the playoffs and stuff like that too. And you know, when it, when he went down, uh, when you know when uh, Chris Sale struck him out and literally turned him into human form of, into a human form of a K, that was you know that was one of the greatest senses of, of irony I ever saw. That's but when beautiful. it comes to but when it comes to Manny Machado. I have zero sympathy for him as a player. I mean, like, I hate him, frankly. I mean, I I don't hate a lot of guys, but Manny Machado, I hate as a as, I hate as a baseball player. Mm-hmm. Here, here's the thing, and here's the one pass I will give him. Right after the play, he immediately went to um Edmund, helped helped him up, slapped him on the butt, and said, and just made sure he was okay, which is yeah. the common courtesy thing to do. But in that situation, you know what I'm doing? I'm turning back and I'm running to first. I'm saying, you're only getting one of us, damn it. You ain't turning double play. You you don't let him tag you. You don't try and take him out. You back up and you make him decide, are you going to come after me? Are you going to throw the ball? What's the plan? Because if yeah. he then throws the ball to first, 
I'm booking it the second and praying I make it safe. If not, it's a double play. That's the way it's supposed to be in the first place. You know, you're trying your best or you use your three feet of space and you, you juke behind him. You hit him with that back juke. Mm -hmm. That is a completely wrong way to do it. I mean, I, I mean, also, frankly, the Cardinals, uh, you know, you know, it, you know, like you're saying, like, like Machado, it shouldn't have even been in this situation because, you know, the Cardinals, you know, if they had just gone to the base, but no, you know, the, the, the correct thing to do there, you were, um, as a second baseman, your momentum should already be taking you left because you want to yeah. make that play to first. So if you can tag and throw, you saved a good, a second, second and a half yeah, to yeah. get that guy out. Mm -hmm. So Edmund made the right play. Yeah, it. You know, when it comes to Machado, man, I just have zero sympathy. It's I, I really do not like the guy as a baseball player. And I mean, you know, he could be a great guy off the field, could be like all this stuff. I mean, that that all that could be true. I have no idea what the guy is like off off the field. I just know as a player and as the way he plays, I do not like it. Mm -hmm. It's I really don't like the guy. And this article says um, Pedroia insisted in February he's at peace with the play. For Red Sox fans who still blame Machado for hastening the end of Pedroia's career probably didn't enjoy watching Sunday's play involving Edmund. Perfect example. Yeah. And here's the thing. Like, I frankly, I don't have a problem with players playing aggressively. Like, I don't this I don't want this to be the type of thing where, where I'm where I'm like where I'm like players are playing too aggressively. No, I like when players, you know, you know, if if you're going into second base and you're going in, you're not trying to like really take out the guy, but you're just trying to, you know, break up a double play as you know, is as it said in the traditional sense, you're not trying to physically hurt anybody, but you're, you know, trying to break up the double play. I don't have an issue with that. If something happens as as a result of that, that's whatever. But it's the fact that when Machado does does those things, he kind of adds things to it that makes it worse. Like when he went into second against Pedroia, he 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 went in with the cleat and tried to do stuff. When he went in yeah. on Aguilar, he dragged the foot and tried to do stuff. And, you know, frankly, if, if it had just been kind of a mix-up where he ran into Edmund, that's something that you can make the case for. But when he did it, he almost kind of lowered the shoulder down into it and kind of, you know, dove towards the ground at the guy's legs. Yeah, I think I think he tried to slide. And I, I hate to be justifying him, but this is one way to look at it. Yeah. I think he was trying to slide, saw he was too close, and tried to stop his momentum. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously that that is something that could, that could, be, that could be the case. And maybe... But his past just isn't helping him. It, it doesn't help. It doesn't help you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not helping the case. No. But I did want to get your opinion real quick on um, what was the score of the game? It was like 15 to 2, something like that. I think 15 to 4. Is what's 15 score, to yeah. 4. Yeah, you're right. The White Sox are killing. It. And was, was it the Twins? Yep. Twins put a position player on the mound. Willens, Willens Astudio. Yep, that dude. That dude is built like a tank. Oh, I, I've heard. I've heard that he's built like a turtle. <laughs> yeah, that's about he, it. He lo he, lo he looks like Franklin the turtle. Mm -hmm. Um, let's let's just say if Bartolo Colon has a body like a Greek god, he's we'll call him Hercules. <laughs> All right, we'll 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 keep it there, but. He throws an absolute meatball, 53 miles an hour, something like that, middle of the strike zone, and I'll never say the White Sox guy's name correctly. You mean Mercedes is how you say his name. I'm just going to say Mercedes. Mercedes, boom, Santa Maria <laughs> over the wall. And people had a problem with this somehow. At this point, in my opinion, let the players play, you know. You're going to put a position player on the mound. Yes, you're trying to save innings from your actual guys, but that's the stuff you have to expect. It's not yeah. going to come free. They're not going to be like, oh, they got a position player on the mound. Let me aim to ground ball. No. Yeah, no. No, and here's the thing, too. Like, you, you were saying that some people were upset. His own coach was upset with him about this thing. Tony Tony Larusa came out and, and, said, and said that he was disappointed with the way that he handled the play. Now, I guess the reason that, you know, part of the reason was uh, La Russa came out and and said uh, and and he did say that, you know, it was it was ridiculous for him to do so. But I guess another thing that, you know, kind of makes this an interesting case was that I guess, you know, La Russa and the third base coach had uh, had relayed to, to Mercedes to uh, the take sign and he had, they had given him the take sign. He apparently might have blown through it, which. That could that I I could see where that's an issue and but yes. I, and that, that and that's a separate issue of like of like oh like this player you just like, missed this, the sign yeah yeah this, like this player like or he like went against the sign and like that's something like hey like when we give you a sign like do the sign 
that's an like, internal I, issue yeah yeah and and i feel like that's a separate issue than what from what people are saying i feel like like the uh, like the main issue of what people are trying to say is like it was like it wasn't classy like it like kind of ruins the sanctity Screw of the that. game and all this stuff i like i feel like that's kind of the more i feel like that's kind of the main issue that people are getting at are getting at with this because then la Russa also came out and, and said and said this has to do you know you know mercedes he's a rookie he, he you know he doesn't really know kind of stuff like that better even though you know you know, I saw Jared Carabas was talking about this and and he, and he, and he, he goes, yeah, he's a rookie, but do you know how long he's been working at his craft to get to this level and have the success that he's having? I mean, your main, your main Mercedes, you know, he kind of came out of nowhere when he came into the big leagues. A lot of people were not expecting this. We're expecting him to have the impact that he did. He came in, had a hitting streak, you know, from, from opening day of a, of about like eight, nine games where it was, where it was like, who the heck is this guy? And then, you know, he's also proceeded to ha- still remain with a high with a high batting average right now has been a key part of that White Sox lineup. And, you know, so so it's not like this is like some fringe guy that's ba- that's barely doing it. Like this is like one of your, you know, frankly, star players this year. He's yes. been really he's been really good for you. This is almost like Jose Abreu kind of doing this. I mean, obviously, Abreu has a much longer tenure history now with the White Sox. Mm-hmm. But, you know, your Mercedes has had a very great season this year. And I think that. You know, just to say, oh, he's this rookie is is like the guy's not batting like two ten, and you know, got got called up yesterday. He's been an impact player for you all season, and I feel like to kind of downgrade him like this, you know, it, you know, Tony Larusa, you know, coming into this year already hasn't had a lot of support behind him. I know he had like the whole DUI accusation, and all like, well, not DUI accusi- accusation. He was arrested for it, and then you had all the other stuff surrounding him as well. And people people were like, man, you left on such good terms in twenty eleven. You won the World Series. Why are you coming back now? Like you were, you know, working in the front offices and front offices in baseball. You had a good gig. Why did you get back into managing? And this, I feel like this is just souring the taste of so many people with him. Mm-hmm. And it is, it is for me too. At at this point, like I said, you let the kids play. Yeah. All right, these are a bunch of grown men who are getting to play a kids' sport. We're not gonna try and I can't. I don't talk about politics on the show, but we're not going to try and get political in that kind of way with it where we need to make sure we're classy for the, it's a kid's game. And let me just say what Trevor Bauer said. He said, dear hitters, if you're, if you hit a three O Homer off me, I will not consider it a crime. Dear people who are still mad about a hitter hitting kindly get out of the game. Can't believe we're still talking about three O swings. If you don't like it, managers or pitchers, just be better. If you're not trying to have a dude daddy hack off you when you're down 15 to 4, don't put in a pitcher that's throwing 54 miles an hour. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. I mean, you know, I mean, we, we obviously played in like, you know, either varsity games or town games or whatever level we played at. And, you know, whenever the team ran out of guys, they put in some kid that, you know, wasn't a pitcher and, you know, was throwing those kind of pitches. And everyone at the time was always greasing their palms, just just going like go, going like, let's go like, let's like, let's like, up my stats. Yeah, it, it was always like it was always like I'm going to hit a nuke off this guy. Like I remember my my, my friend John, uh, I, I unfortunately wasn't there for it. I, I had a game that day, but it but I was on the but I was on the same town team as him. This kid comes into a game. My friend John had never hit a home run at this point. And, you know, he kind of he kind of just he's now kind of reflecting on this on this going. Maybe I shouldn't have done this, but he goes in. And this kid literally is just throwing kind of like just meatballs and he goes up and he just whacks one out of the park off the, off the little league dugout adjacent the field. And like, it was apparently it was just an absolute monster shot. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, like we all had, we all had games where we faced where we saw a guy like that come into the game. And we were so antsy to come in. We none of us at the time were, were, were thinking, all right, guys got to shut it down. Now they're bringing in the meatball pitcher. You know, some guys, some guys were, were, were wondering, were wondering, Hey, maybe I could go up there lefty and maybe get a hit. Like, you know, yeah. it, it, it was always, it was always like, let's, let's do this thing. Yeah. And here's the thing, right? Baseball is a game. Unlike no other, there oh, yeah. is no clock, mm-hmm. right? In basketball, you could be up 30 with three minutes left. It's physically impossible for the other team to come back. You could put yeah. in your bench guys and let them ride out garbage minutes in mm-hmm. baseball. It's not over till the fat lady takes a bath. <laughs> okay. Uh, you could be in the bottom ninth with two outs and you can score 14 runs and win the game. Mm-hmm. It's not, and, I'm, I'm saying it's very improbable. Yeah. But it's not impossible. Mm-hmm. It's you, you don't have to increase your speed. You just need to do what you do. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. At any point, 
somebody can come back from those kinds of things. And let me just say, when I was in high school, it was my senior year. We go to a team that was evenly matched with us, and they hand our butts to us. It's mm-hmm. eight to one in the fifth inning. Mm-hmm. And my coach, we were very, very thin at pitchers. My coach comes up to me, I'm the senior captain, and he says, hey, take the bump for an inning or two. I'm like, I've never pitched an inning of varsity. I've done some work in JV, but I don't have a fast arm. I got a good curveball to me, and that's about it. Yeah. And actually, I got a decent slide piece, but no fastball. Just, right? Okay. We, we don't need you to flex the entire episode. <laughs> no. I, I, like actually, I said. Actually, actually, you know what? It's your show. You do what you want. My, my <laughs> fastball, I was hitting a good 76, if that. At most, Hell, I, I mean, I'm hitting like 56. So, like, take, I'll take right. that. So, I go in. Do you think the other team was just like, oh, this dude's a lot worse? They're giving us the game. Let's back off. No, no. they came in and they rocked me. <laughs> okay, literally and metaphorically. Okay, yeah. one dude hit a ball straight at me. All right, and because I'm a dancer, I was able to avoid it, and that's the only reason that ball was shot at me. And by the time I was done with that one inning, the score was 14 to one. I got handed. It was not good, but they, it, people will say, Oh, that's high school. We're talking about professional. doesn't matter. We're playing the same game. I have a very, I I have a very similar experience with that where, you know, I did not pitch. I was not a pitcher. I, I was strictly outfield if, and you know, you know, even in town games, I wouldn't even see the out. I wouldn't even see the infield. I wouldn't see anything, but, like I like I well you know like towards the end like when we got thin on players like and you know my dad my dad would coach would would coach some of the would coach some of the games so he so he'd be like eh, Brian we need a guy going at second like just like you know just try to knock stuff st- stuff down like I wasn't a second baseman but I went in there I just did what I could yeah and then there were then there were a couple games where you know I I would just get brought in because like because I wouldn't get really phased by a situation in a blowout of, of like like oh my god I let up a run I, I would just be like you know what. I'm not, I'm not supposed to be in here. I'm not a starter. So I'm just doing what I can. So, I mean, I remember I get brought in and, you know, you know, little, little backs, right. I'm sorry, kind of backtracking here, but I, uh, I actually used to do, I used to do a baseball camp actually at my college before I ever knew I was going to go there. So I actually did baseball camps at Bryant university with Adam. Uh, you know, oh, really? Yeah, no, it was me and Adam. We did, we did baseball camps at Bryant before I ever knew I was going to go there. I did one in eighth grade and I did another one, uh, you know, going into like, like sophomore summer going into my junior year. And, uh, you know, when in my, in, during that eighth grade summer, I remember I tried to develop, like, I, like this random kid just said, 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 Hey, like, maybe we're going to have you pitch. And like, I was like, okay. And I did not have a fast arm. And he, and he said, he said, Hey, look, let's, let's work on like a curveball. And I was like, okay. And like my, my thing literally started up here and I would just flick it down and I swear to God, like for a while, this thing actually worked. Like it was dis- <laughs> like it was disgusting. I'd either aim it like uh, I'd either like let it go like above my head, and this thing would like start above the guy's head and end like in the middle of the zone, but it would come down at like such an angle that the guy could not get a good piece on the ball, or it, or I would throw it out here where it would you know start like a like a meatball middle of the plate, but it would die two feet pe- two feet before the plate, but the guy would already commit to a swing. It was like mm-hmm. actually like a disgusting pitch. And topping that on top with like a 65 mile an hour tops fastball. It was hilarious to see guys going for it because they were swinging for the fences and they couldn't touch it. I try to break, I try to bring out that, uh, that EFIS pitch, like, uh, you know, like maybe four or five years later, I'm, I'm, you know, now a senior at this point and just in a town game, just messing around and throw this pitch to, to this football kid who literally, you know, he either, he literally either strikes out or, you know, connects big time. And man, when I, when I tell you he connected big time, he just golf swings this thing over the over over the field at our school and I'll, I'll grant it like our field isn't tiny and, and i'm just like i'm like oh boy <laughs> like you gotta be kidding me no when um i i always had like dreams of pitching i always knew i was never good at it but i always yeah. had dreams of pitching oh yeah. so i started with this uh, you know what legion ball is yeah of course so i started with this um legion ball team in maine mm-hmm. and I was part of the team and they asked, um, they asked, okay, pitchers or guys who think they can pitch, let's um, get some drills in, right? And I have this thing where if there's no batter, I am very accurate. Once there's a batter, 
Nope. So I was on this. I was on the team with my friend Noah Sammons. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget this guy. Um, he had a fastball that was fast but not accurate. Oh. He could he could easily throw eighty five as a freshman in high school. Really, that's insane. He, this dude had a weight room love like no one else. So, um, he goes in. He's throwing his eighty five. And it's just going anywhere. I come in for the practice. This is the day before the game. It's like our second practice. I throw. Um, I tell the coach, I'm like, hey, I'm not much of a pitcher. Not a, not a quick fastball, but I got a deuce. I got a slider and I got a splitter that I really, that I like. He's like, okay, let me see it. And I go in. I huck it and all that. And remember, I'm an outfielder. I'm not a pitcher. Yeah. But I'm, I'm hitting my spots. Mm-hmm. And my curve's got some good break to it. At the time, my slider really didn't. But after practice, like, okay, pitchers, thanks. Let's get some fielding drills in. Then we went home. Mm-hmm. I go to the game. I'm expecting to start in right because that's where coaches um, – that's what coaches tell me. He's like, okay, you got good speed, not a good arm. I'm going to want you in either right or left. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm okay with that. I was a center fielder, but I'll take the corners. Yeah, I'm actually and, surprised. What, what, really quick, I'm surprised that they. I'm surprised they would they would opt for right because right is usually because right's usually where, where they put the guy with the strongest arm because yeah. you got to make because you got to make that because you got to make the throw to third base. So I'm actually yeah, surprised our coach that they would opt for never, that. Our coach was never that good. Yeah, and this is why the first game he comes up to me, he's like, "Hey, I want you to be my ace." I'm like, <laughs> "Say what now? <sighs> Repeat yourself, please." How, how was this Legion team? Uh, my team, it wasn't bad. It was like middle of the pack for our league. We, I think we finished 500. Okay. Yeah. First game, my final line, uh, three innings pitched, eight earned runs, one strikeout, never pitched again. Really? That was, I went from ace to never pitch to basically being <laughs> to be an Austin Bryce. Yeah, like de- that. Yeah. You're designated for assignment really quick. Mm-hmm. My God! Some might call me Robert Stuck. Yeah, they turned you into Rick Ankeel. <laughs> I don't even know that name. You don't even know who Rick Ankeel is? No. He was a pitcher for the Cardinals way back in like the early two thousands. Got a case of the yips, and eventually he had to go back down the minors and came up and came up again as a came up again as an outfielder. Hmm, weird. And, and because he was a pitcher, he just had an absolute rocket of an arm. Oh, damn. All right, so. Sorry. Just, no, you're good. <laughs> just just to wrap up the show a little bit, we've got two things we're going to talk about. Right now, the Celtics are losing at half, 54 to 52. What are your predictions for this team? I'm saying I'm saying we get to the playing tournament. First round loss if we face Brooklyn. Win if we face Philly. Uh, you know, I I would love to see us win if we face Philly. I mean, just the fact that, you know, that, you know, that we're going to be missing Jalen Brown for this. We haven't been healthy this entire year. No. And but there's... I think, I think, I think that, you know, you know, I don't want to see this team go down, but you know, they have, you know, done nothing but, but disappoint me all year. I think that, you know, I that's think that's an understatement. I think the quicker that Danny Ainge can get a hold on trying to rebuild this roster, the better, because it was just a nightmare from the start. Tristan Thompson, you know, did not work out in the way that, in the he way he brought the played. Kardashian curse, it brought the Kardashian curse, but you know, he just did not work out in the way that people thought he was going to. Uh, you know, Jeff Teague couldn't wasn't even able to last through the season with us. And, you know, oh, you know, even, even Danny Age at this point has recognized that this that, you know, he didn't build a good enough roster. So I'm going to be in, I'm going to be very interested to see what he does this offseason. You know, you know, we thought that he, that he got a little kind of, you know, out there with moves this offseason, this past offseason, trying to get guys to really, you know, build an offense. But when I saw they brought Tristan Thompson in a six, nine center, and I'm just like, unfortunately, in this league, that doesn't pass anymore. No. So. You know, who you got to go out, you know, who can't shoot either. And and I was like, I was like, I was like, you know, maybe if Brad can get him in, get him in the right system. You know, I was having a lot of people talk of Tristan Thompson. Me, I was like, sure. I was more going to, I was more on the train of getting a guy like Andre Drummond, but I was like, sure. Like, let's, let's try Tristan Thompson. Let's try. No, the thing, thing that pissed me off was when we could have had the opportunity to trade Gordon Hayward for Miles Turner and a first. Yeah. We didn't have that. Miles that, Turner for the first half of the year was borderline defensive player of the year. And was a good three-point shooter. 
I mean, there have been a lot of moves that you wish the Celtics could have made. Like that is one of them. And it looks like, you know, they, it looks like they kind of just got greedy with that deal. And, you know, you had a really good opportunity. To, I think you were getting, I think they wanted, I think it was because I think they wanted both like all Depot and Turner. And I'm just like, take one of those guys. Hayward it got greedy. Yep. You yeah, know, it got greedy. And, you know, you ended up flipping them to, to, I think to the, to the Hornets for like, I forget even who you got out. Of it. You know, Did you know, they almost pulled the trigger. There was almost a deal centered around Marcus Smart for the second overall pick to get James Wiseman. James Wiseman, wow. As much as I love Marcus Smart, I would have done that deal in a heartbeat. Yeah. One of the deals I'm 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 glad they didn't do it, but I would have been, but it would have been very interesting to see what what would have happened. It's I guess uh Smart Brown and maybe some other guys might have been packaged for James Harden. Obviously. Oh I, yeah. Obviously, I think I obviously I don't I wouldn't have really wanted to see Harden here because I don't think that he would have liked Boston enough to, you know, really sign on here long term and say and say I'm gonna be a Celtic for life. So I think it would have just been a Kyrie type of situation where you yeah. know I don't I don't think he would have been as toxic as Kyrie here. I mean, obviously you can make the case that he was toxic uh and that that's what got him out of Houston. I don't think it would have been like that kind of a case where the players resented him, but I just don't think he would have like really liked the Boston atmosphere that much. And you know, given his time and and when his time in free agency comes, he would have just said, I'm out of here. So yeah. you, you got to find a You got to find a grinder who really wants to be up here. And, you know, you know, while Jason Tatum obviously is still only 19 years old, uh, you still have to find time to uh, you still have the time. Wow. You could that, that joke went right over your head. <laughs> uh, no. I, I was I'm sorry. I was looking at the stats. I was just about to say okay, I, 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 once you once you said it, once you pointed it out, I figured what you said. I was like, I was like, I was like, wow, like, like. I, I guess Boston fans really do think he is still only 19. That's insane. he's only 22. <laughs> yeah. He's only 37. He's got plenty more. Uh, no, but you know, uh, you know, he's only 23 years old. You know, Jalen Brown, I think is only like 25 at this point, 24, 25. So they, I mean, you know, by the time they hit their peaks, which isn't like, you know, for Brown, maybe four years and for, and for Tatum, maybe more like five or six, which is insane. So like, they're not even at their peaks yet and they're still performing. So I think, mm -hmm. you, I think there is a level of patience that you have to have with these guys, but, and you know, they're, they're locked down with extensions, but you know, you have, you have to be wondering like, are these going to be guys that are these going to be the franchise guys? Are this, is this going to be the next, like, you know, bird and uh bird and McHale type type, uh, you know, stat leading kind of stat, you know, uh, guys with stats. I don't yeah. know. Like I think those questions are valid, even though they are this young. And it's and it's like, and it's like, what other pieces? You know, there's been a lot of mobility around the league, and I assume there's going to be a ton of it this off season, as well as you know, as you know, it's just become commonplace in the NBA at this point. But I'm just wondering who is going to want to go to Boston, and you know, what moves are going to present themselves this off season. It's something that's really interesting to me. And you know, I you know, well, again, while well, anything is possible, I just don't know what is on the table so far. Mm -hmm. And for tonight, the Celtics, by the way, just took a 61-56 lead. They're coming out of the we'll half. Take, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. Jason Tatum is gonna is gonna take us to, uh, to the chip. Jalen Brown, you know, we don't even need you at this point anymore. My attitude is flipped completely. I am back on. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Are you are you on hormonal medicine or something? No, are you okay? I, I, I'm not. No, I'm joking. Obviously, you gotta, no. You gotta but, talk about I'm, something. No, my thoughts are my thoughts are the exact same. I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm yeah. not. You know, I'm not in a manic episode right now, so don't worry. So um, Tatum is 21, Kemba has 18, and that's basically all of our scoring. Yeah. No one else is literally scoring. Marcus Smart is seven. Um, uh, Westbrook has eight, 13 rebounds, five assists. Bradley Beal's got 15. Ish Smith has 11. Ish Smith. Surprisingly, I actually know who that is because just because I play NBA 2K, but that's it. Oh, no, Ish Smith has played for every team you could possibly think of. Oh, yeah. He's played for, I think, 10. He he, And he's only like 30. Yeah. He plays for two more teams. He's got the record. That's, that's, that's killing me. But I do got to ask you real quick, two more things. We'll just rapid fire through them. First, thoughts on Albert Pujols being a Dodger. We'll get more into it on your episode, but really quick. Uh, it does. It doesn't look normal whatsoever. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, I think when people think of Albert Pujols when he retires, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, him. It's going to be him wearing that jersey with the bird on the stick. I think that's how a lot of people will remember him as a baseball player. Uh, you know, it's, as an, it's a paint. It's a Peyton Manning. It's it's a Peyton Manning without the without the rings. It's a Colts Broncos thing. You can look at him either way. 
I mean, the Angels, you could say it was a Peyton Manning. This is like this is like him. This is this would have been like Peyton Manning signing with the CFL. <laughs> no, this would have this would have been Peyton Manning taking a one year deal behind uh, Tom Brady <laughs> behind. Yeah, behind Tom Brady. That's <laughs> and, and, that's and, what and this just, would have been. But no, that's just saying let's run it <laughs> between the Angels and Cardinals is what I meant. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, yeah, between the Angels and Cardinals, it's it's apparent at this point. It's like seeing Brady on the Bucks. It just doesn't look normal. Yeah. Uh, but but, you know, frankly, you know, he he's he has two championships already in 06 and 11. And, you know, if he can add one more to that resume, I'll take it. You know, obviously, obviously, this I is forgot he won. I didn't for some reason. I thought Pujols hasn't won yet. Yeah, it's I mean, you know, frankly, be, frankly, when you go a decade of being in the abysmal, uh, in the abysmal trenches of of Anaheim, that yeah. that kind of that kind of just becomes apparent. I, I mean, especially, you know, quick little tangent. I, I mean, and I mean, very quick, you know, the Angels have two of the most electric players in baseball. I know I know you were saying I know when I said, like, you know, Shohei Otani was on like the Yankees or Dodgers, like and you were kind of like very opposed to that. But I mean, you know, you have a mark in, in L.A. and I mean, it's been pretty and i mean you know you know you'd think you'd think you'd have a kind of an advantage with that but you have two of the most exciting players in baseball and your team still sucks they are bad but like and and plus you had albert pools too who i mean obviously fell off once he once he got to once he got to the angels you know obviously had that one all-star year in 2015 wasn't really the same guy since uh but you know you know it just makes you wish like if trout and otani were on i'm not even saying i want him on the yankees but if like he was on the Cardinals or he was on like the, you know, frankly, even I don't even, I don't even know. Like if he was on the Blue Jays, even like, like it, it, I feel like it would create more buzz. Like not even saying the Blue Jays are this powerhouse, like super franchise, but just with the, with, with it just being constant of how bad they are. It's like, it's like, you don't deserve the talent that you have. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's, but you know, I... but yeah, no, going back to the idea of pool holes though, Seeing him in that number 55 also doesn't look normal. It looks, I mean, you know, the guy, it, I don't, I don't want to say it looks like he's towards the end. I, he, it looks like he wants to play next year. I mean, if he does, this I, is it. He, he, I think I, he's already I, come out and said this is the last ride. I, I don't, I, I think, I think he said he plans to play past this. Let me I don't think I, it won't, it won't be as a Dodger, but it, but I don't, but I think, I think he came out and said this isn't a swan song. I, I swear we talked about this, or not you really? and me, but yeah, yeah, but somebody else, and it said, um, yeah, his wife amended her post saying it was only the well, final year of pools. Ten years and pools can move. Uh, amused with the whole deal, he clarified and said he's not ready to announce his retirement, and that will come after. When was this? So that came uh, back. That was like back in February when the wife when the wife said that this would be his last year. And, you know, I thought I thought that after everything that went down, like and he got released from the team, I was like, part of part of me was confused about that because because it's like when Edelman got released and like and then it came out very soon that he retired. Like, I think that was kind of just a mix up in terms of the way the media played that. So when it when it was announced that he was released, I thought, you know, the fact that like there wasn't an immediate thing that's saying this is a part of uh, his retirement press conference or anything like that. I, I was like, that is weird. So Pujols I clarifies report saying he's retiring after 21 uh los angeles first place and future hall of famer has not made a decision do you, you just what yeah you just re- the, what the hell <laughs> you just told me he clarified that he's retiring and then you said he's not what the okay let's let's you got anything else to say to the people before we call it a show i mean you're not yelling at me there no i'm yelling no. at i'm yelling at a stupid website but yeah you got anything I mean, to say it, to people uh, obviously, uh, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, if you want to follow me, follow me on, uh, follow me on all those platforms that I mentioned previously and through our main hub, uh, on our Instagram, which is at down dot to the wire again at down dot to the wire. Uh, you know, this whole episode will be up on Wednesday as well as my show with Robert. I can't wait to see you guys there, but, uh, it's, it was a great episode. I can't wait to discuss more. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And once again, as always, it's awesome to have you on. We're going to definitely have you more on and we might have some things in the works that we're going to keep undercover for now, but we'll see if maybe we can get that thing going scheming. We're, we're scheming. All right. We're, we're very good at that scheming, getting something planned for about a month or two and then never really working on it. It's college. <laughs> it's this college kid thing. You, y'all, if you're in high school or college, which is basically my typical demographic is guys from 14 to 25 is my, demographic and the people in India and Australia y'all already know. So 
With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you guys. Make sure you tune into his show, which will be linked in the description. The Red Sox are losing 6 nothing right now in the bottom of the eighth. Screw this team sometimes. Like I said, it's a mood swing of a year. Roll that outro music. We'll see you guys next time.